Today we are going to be hiking to Fern Lake and we thought it would be a good idea to tell you kind of our setups for a day hike, kind of our tips and tricks and what we do. So today it's just me and Melissa and Zamboni, our little dog here, because dogs are allowed on this trail. So I just showed you guys tip number one, you know, when you're getting your vehicle ready to leave for like a long day, we like to put a sunshade in on the dashboard, make sure all your valuables are out of sight, out of mind, because, you know, it's a small little parking lot. It's right here on the main street, but you never know. So do yourself a favor, make sure it's locked and everything is out of sight, out of mind, and hopefully you have zero issues. So right off the bat, we're already be coming to a fork on the trail. So we first would like to say that it's really important to get a nice early start because this is a 15 mile hike and it's gonna be a high of 86 today with a lot of elevation gain. So nice early start, we got the trail at 6 a.m. We always like to use two separate apps for mapping and you wanna make sure that you save everything to your phone so that you can view it when you don't have cell service. So, so you're using Gaia GPS. Gaia GPS. So I signed up for the paid account. I think it's $20 a year. And um, you can download maps to your phone, use it on airplane mode, um, but keep your GPS on and it will show you where you show are. You where you're at. I plotted out the map, the trail ahead of time. And I'm also having it record where we're actually going. So, and then I use uh, Strava, which shows the map as well. And then on top of that as well, what I do is, is I, I zoom in on the map when we have good service and I just do screenshots. So it kind of gives me an idea of what's going on and where everything is. So our next uh, super, super important tip, I mean, not really a tip, this should be common knowledge, but is having some good footwear. Uh, we, we both love ultra trail runners but we both used to rock big heavy boots. Um, if we're doing more of a backpacking trip, super high mileage, longer distances, carrying a lot more weight, we might do something with a bit more protection and support. But today we're doing a 15 mile trail hike and we just have day packs. So we're rocking our ultras, which are low tops. They have a lot of good grip. They make them and waterproof or non-waterproof. So far we like them. Do you have anything to add to that? Good for like all around um, running. There's a good amount of cushion. Um, I used to be a dedicated boots boot person because I was thinking that I needed the ankle support, but then I realized I just needed to strengthen my ankles. But whatever works for you. Yeah, you? that's the key, whatever works for you. I've realized personally that with the ultras, I don't get blisters. Yeah. My feet don't hurt at the end of the day at all whatsoever. And I noticed that obviously they're lighter than boots. Exactly. You don't have that ankle support, but I feel much more nimble. Yes. And my feet are able to be placed on rocks and different terrains a lot easier where boots are a little more clunky and chunky. And if you do kind of stumble and trip a little bit, I feel that it's easier to kind of catch yourself with your feet when you're wearing shoes, ultras, short, like low tops like this, lighter weight than when you're wearing big heavy boots. Yeah, and you don't, like, we, we just like ultras, but uh, we're talking just trail shoes versus boot, essentially. Yeah. One more thing that I really love is, considering we have low tops, uh, I have some ultra trail gaiters, basically in the back there's Velcro, and then on the front there's a little clip, so it really helps with rocks and sand and de debris getting into your shoe. Uh, these things have been a game changer, and Ever since I've gotten them, I, I never get rocks or anything in my shoes, which is awesome. So hydration is critically important on any hike. We bring a 100 ounce, three liter 
bladders um, in our backpacks. It's really important to pay attention to what the weather is going to be like. We know it's going to be a really, really hot day today, so we made sure to drink plenty of water before we started the hike and um, have our hydration packs as well. When we get to lakes and streams up there, we will be purifying more water in case we need it, which I'm sure we will. This is a really intense hike right out the gate. We've already climbed a lot in elevation, so we're going to be drinking extra water because of that. And because we're at such a high elevation, it's important to stay hydrated as much as possible because otherwise you can get elevation sickness. So these are soft flasks and these are designed to fit in my Offspree pack. So I like to run one with electrolyte mix and then over here I do one with a caffeine mix and then we always almost always do our hikes fasted so we just build ketones as we go that's kind of random but I figured I'd throw it in but this is basically our energy and our fuel for the day. Another major major tip is sun protection. So we started at 6 a.m., it was dark, but now we're getting here, it's, we're getting sweaty. The sun is popping out, it's gonna be 86 today. So it starts from, from head to toe, realistically. So I have a nice moisture wicking, uh, was it UVA um, hat? Blocker hat, yeah. Blocker hat. I got a hat on my back. She has a hat as well. And then obviously sunglasses are super important. And then we like to use these as well for multiple purposes. Um, you can get these in UVA protection as well. These two are not, but also because of the, the current times with COVID and everything, we just rock these. And they protect our necks and we can also get them wet if it's really hot out later in the day. And that our is huge. Cool. That is huge. Getting them wet, it makes it really cools you down. And uh, then sunscreen, of course, you know, we put sunscreen on our entire face, our ears, you know, all up and down our arms, any exposed skin. Well, you do. I personally like to avoid sunscreen when possible. Yeah. I am a little, I do have a little bit darker skin, but I would rather wear a lightweight long sleeve to protect from the sun. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard because it's a catch-22 because some sunblock has stuff in it that's not good for you, but then again, being in the direct sun for too long is not good for you. I try to use sunscreen that has um, zinc in it as the active ingredient because they tend to have less chemicals yes um, but yeah long sleeve they have those in UVA protection they're super lightweight but yes the sun protection is extremely extremely important all right guys so next key um, piece of equipment would be your pack. So this is Melissa's pack. It's an Osprey, what is it? Manta 25, she's had it for a very long time. We really like that it has stretchy pockets on the sides for, she's using her shoes on both sides. It has a lot of small pockets, a lot of big pockets, a lot of areas that you can clip stuff to. And then obviously it carries that three liter bladder and let's spin her around. She can strap her poles in. Osprey packs are great. A lot of them now because they have a magnetic clip for your hydration, which is awesome. And then she has a hip belt as well as a chest mount. And it's all adjustable side pockets. And most packs nowadays are, this is a very typical setup. It's got load lifters. Out load lifters because it's a slightly larger pack, which helps carry the load a little bit smoother. So yeah, overall, I think getting something like this is worth the investment over, let's say like a Jan Sport or like something that's just very cheap. Like she's had this for probably how many years? Like 10? Probably 10 years and it's holding up great and Osprey's warranty is insane. So this is the Osprey Duro 15 liter. It contours to your body a little bit more and it's actually designed to trail run. On your longer runs, we need to bring more gear when there's more elements. But anyways, we just want to say that a pack that you carry is very important to have a very nice pack. Alright guys, one of the most important tips I can recommend is knowing the weather before you go and know your limits. It was really cold when we first started this hike. We were wearing long pants and sweaters and 
Now it's getting really hot. It's about a high of 86 degrees today and we are at um, 8,000 feet of elevation between 8 and 9. So it's going to stay a little bit cooler than it is in town. We know that we kind of want to try to avoid hiking on a very exposed section of trail in the middle of a hot day like that. So just taking breaks if we need to, um, having electrolyte tablets, not overdoing it to the point where we're going to get ourselves into trouble safety wise um, and not need to be rescued or carry out, carried off this mountain because nobody's going to come out here to help us. I would encourage you to push your physical boundaries um, because that will make you stronger physically and mentally but don't push it so much that you get yourself heat stroke or something like that so So this is what we were talking about earlier with our water purification system. So basically you fill this upper bag with dirty water and then it comes down, it's, it's a gravity works made by a platypus and it basically comes down, it goes through the filter and uh, it runs down and fills your bladder up. It's super lightweight and it's extremely easy to use and we've had very good luck with it. We've also got these great adventure sandals that we've been wearing for the past few months and we used to think they were super dorky but I mean they are but they're super functional as well so we're able to put them on and step in the water without getting our feet stabbed by rocks or pebbles and uh, nice to give your feet a little break and if you have to walk through a stream or a lake for some reason you know you don't have to get your socks and your shoes all wet. As we're coming down this really steep decline, I wanted to let you guys know that something else that's pretty crucial that we like to use a lot is a hiking pole. This is just a black diamond. I only bring one for the most part. Melissa brings two, but we mostly use them on the downhills. It helps relieve a little bit of pressure on your knees, but a lot of people do like them for uphill as well you can kind of dig in and use your upper body on some of the steep sections so it just all depends but it's something that we would recommend if you're doing a pretty long day hike especially if there's a lot of uh, ascents and descents or whatever you call it something else to consider um, even on a day hike is if you're bringing a pet you need to keep in mind like everything that they will need and then also if they get injured you might need to potentially carry them out so a lot of people bring booties for their feet, make sure you bring water for them, a bowl for them. And then while we're on the subject of animals, you need to know what animals are in the area that you're hiking. We're up here by Mammoth Lakes. There's a lot of black bear. We saw a deer this morning, and then I'm sure there's mountain lions. They might be a little bit lower, but mountain lions. So we walk with a bear bell. Hopefully they'll hear you. And then as well, we do carry bear spray. So just a few things to keep in mind on animal and or pet safety. All right, and most importantly, don't forget to tread lightly. I, by that I mean pack it in, pack it out, take everything that yeah. you brought in with you, pack it out and throw it away. Unlike the water bottle we picked up along the way <laughs> and a few other pieces of trash, mm -hmm. don't don't do that people mm -hmm. leave it like you found it if not better exactly always pick up trash if you see it on the trail or anywhere you are for that matter um, you know try not to walk too far off trail if you have to for some reason um, and just tread lightly take care of the land and leave it there so future generations can enjoy it yeah we uh, we really hope you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you found it helpful just kind of like a guide of what we do for hiking and certain things you might want to think about and like always, make sure you subscribe if you have not yet. And if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for joining our adventure endeavor.